I must admit that though I wanted to honor my uncle in a way that would inspire, encourage, and motivate those of you that are gathered here today to honor such an amazing man that lived an equally amazing life, I found myself struggling with words and attempting to silence my own frustrations and pain over a life that I deemed has ended far too soon. Because he was more than my uncle. He was like my big brother. Yet it was in the midst of my tears that I believe God spoke the loudest in giving me the words to share during this moment in time. As I started reminiscing over how my uncle taught me how to play the clarinet, which I still have to this day. <laughs> introduced me to the world of fashion, mainly because he criticized my unflattering choices. <laughs> Though I'm sure he would be pleased today. <laughs> and exposed me to the arts overall. There are three attributes he possessed that I believe serve as the encouragement we all could use to assist us in taking this sad occasion and using it as a springboard to live our best lives. <laughs> Number one, he walked in his purpose authentically. Yeah. Number two, he served excellently. Yeah. And number three, he was who he was unapologetically. <laughs> <laughs> in walking in his purpose authentically, the new international version of 1 Peter 4 and 10 of the Holy Writ reminds us of this very assertion. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stores of God's grace in his various forms. There were scores of messages pouring in immediately after Sammy's death. While all of them were sad in tone, they still served as testimonies to the purpose that he had as stories were being shared on the profound impact that he made on people's careers, their ministries, and lives overall. Yes. It was no secret that my uncle was a gifted musician. He was an anointed choir director, and he was also a talented teacher. Whether you experience the gifts that he has and he was endowed with singing under his leadership on a choir, or working alongside him as he engaged young minds, or was simply blessed by his gifts as he willingly and sacrificially gave up of his time, his talent, and his resources to make you your best you, he still walked in his purpose. So I encourage you to also walk in your purpose authentically. There are far too many dreams that were buried right along with the dreamer. Now is the time to write that book, start that new business, create that mentoring program, or enter into ministry. But don't let those gifts go to waste. Because remember, you can get fired from a job, but you cannot get fired from your gifts. <laughs> Next, my uncle served excellence. Everything he did was an excellence because ultimately he knew who he was doing it for. Amen. I know personally I may have rolled some eyes, yeah. I rolled some necks, <laughs> I popped some tongues, and I mumbled many things under my breath as he made me practice over and over and over and over and over again until I got it right, no matter what it was. <laughs> He was my very first music teacher, and he was also my pageant coach. Even when it came to the discussion we had about me switching careers from corporate into education, he wouldn't let up unless I presented to him a plan in place for progression and promotion. Colossians 3 and 23 says that whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. When we serve, it's not about us, period. I am almost sure that many of you experienced this level of excellence that my uncle exhibited. It may have gotten on your last nerve, but in the end, you were and are grateful. 
Sammy pushed the bar of excellence each and every time he was faced with a task. He pushed the bar of excellence because he understood the importance of Colossians 3 and 23. And all too often we have step with what God has given us and haphazardly served those he has assigned to us. But if we take the time out to understand the truth that God didn't have step with us, we would do things more differently. Amen. Sammy exemplified that at work, at church, and while serving others. Let's remember that it truly isn't about us, but we are to serve in excellence because we are ultimately serving God. And lastly, which I think is the most dynamic, Sammy was who he was unapologetically. Psalm 139, 13 through 16 reads, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Regardless of whether he was accepted or rejected, he made no apologies about who he was. That is a demonstration of self-love and unfortunately and honestly can be a lonely world at times. You may be sitting here wrestling with being who you are, with trying to be accepted by your family, your peers, and even your enemies. But understand this, there are some places you're going to have to go to alone. Be mindful that there are some things you'll be doing by yourself. Don't be discouraged when you say something and it appears as if no one is listening. Everyone isn't going to celebrate with you because many times God has to separate us in order for him to get the glory and for the purpose he has for our lives to be fulfilled without distraction. So though it may feel uncomfortable, I guarantee you that one certain way to make the devil upset is to do what God has told you to do and to be who he has created you to be. And as I close, let me leave you with this well-known poem by Marianne Williamson. I believe it sums up the life and legacy of my uncle. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. And there is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So, it's no wonder that as we wipe our weeping eyes and continue to seek God to heal our hurting hearts, that his name alone is indication that in due time, we're going to be all right. Amen. In the Hebrew, Samuel means God has heard. Amen. And Emmanuel means God with us. Thus, my family, friends, and loved ones, be encouraged by the life of my uncle, your friend, Samuel Emmanuel Prayer, and know that God has heard, and he is with us. Amen. Amen.